Now, join us to talk about the uh, hero of the day tonight, Mr. Rick Ector from Rick's Firearm Academy of Detroit. Rick, how you doing, sir? Hey, man, I'm doing great. How about yourself? How are you doing this evening? I'm very, very well. Thank you so much for coming on the program tonight. Hey, man, it's always a pleasure. I always am thankful for the opportunity. Well, our hero of the day comes from Detroit. It was a uh, kind of a scary story. A guy pumping gas. He, he went to go pay, uh, coming back out to his truck, and uh, two guys on Friday night try to rob him right there at the pump. Uh, this guy's a right to carry holder. He draws his firearm. He uh, shoots one of the suspected robbers in the chest. The other guy takes off. The uh, right to carry holder is okay. Uh, a, a woman who asked not to be identified, uh, talking to uh, a local media, uh, click on Detroit, said, quote, I think it's terrible because it was just yesterday that three guys robbed the liquor store, but this right here is terrible. It's too close to home. And uh, a rig, it sounds like, you know, people in Detroit are, are getting pretty tired of hearing these uh, types of stories and are glad to see the uh, the stories where you've got an armed citizen who can fight back. Well, yes, I definitely agree. You know, with the level of crime we have here, you know, it is definitely encouraging to see these reports actually make it out to the media and to let other folks know that, yes, it's okay to fight back. And that if you're serious about protecting yourself in this era of decreasing uh, public safety resources, that you take it upon yourself to exercise more involvement in your personal safety. And it's it's very encouraging, uh, not only uh, to myself to see that these things are happening and they're actually making it to the media, but it's also encouraging to my fellow residents of Detroit because if they can actually see someone defending themselves, and it just may encourage them to... Uh, take upon a, a few steps in, in owning their personal protection and doing something about it. Well, you know, I, I, I hope so, Rick. I mean, we were talking about this a little bit earlier in the show, and I said, you know, Detroit obviously dealing with violent crime, uh, and there are a lot of cities out there that are dealing with violent crime, but at least in Detroit, you can protect yourself. Unlike in Chicago, unlike in Washington, D.C., or Camden, New Jersey, you know, if you live in Detroit and you are uh, living in a high-crime neighborhood, you, you can at least become a concealed carry holder. And as you say, you can at least uh, enjoy that measure of personal safety. You know, I, I really honestly and truly believe that our numbers would be worse, uh, believe it or not, uh, if we did not have the ability to protect ourselves. You know, it is really ironic, you know, Cam, that uh, uh, they just recently released uh, some crime stats here uh right after august the 30th and believe it or not august the 30th we had yet another gun buyback where we heard a lot of rhetoric about how uh removing guns from the streets i believe they you know bought back you know if you can believe that term right 65 firearms and and actually crime has spiked upwards as of man uh this uh, as of yesterday according to the police department stats Homicides are at 263, which is up 5% from last year's pay. So, you know, I'm really truly heartened that at least in Detroit, unlike, you know, like as you mentioned, Chicago and, uh, you know, New York City, you know, the average citizen has available to him the right to carry a firearm. Absolutely. And, and you know, I mean, to that end, Rick, let's talk about a couple of other uh Stories out of Detroit recently. I mean, we talked about the, uh, the 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 armed citizen story just a couple of minutes ago, but also on Friday, there was a, a Detroit business owner. This is from WWJ uh, that quote used lethal force after four would be robbers broke into his West Side party store on Friday. Uh, four would be robbers, according to WWJ's Mike Campbell, arrived in a burgundy minivan. Apparently, Jimmy the back door to gain entry to the store, which was closed. Uh, they were surprised by the store owner, who was reported sleeping inside. The store owner armed himself, allegedly fired shots, striking three of the uh, would-be robbers. Uh, one victim, uh, one quote-unquote victim, uh, died from his injuries. The other two wounded males listed in a critical condition, uh, and, and they say an investigation is ongoing. Have you heard anything more about that story, Rick? No, I haven't heard an update on it, but like the uh, story we just talked about before at the gas station, you know, once again, it, it's like we're picking up momentum that we have these armed citizen stories are, are emerging and actually seeing print in the media, and it can only be a, a beneficial and good thing for us, you know, in our efforts to keep ourselves and our families and our homes and our businesses safe. You know, uh, once again, we, we do have the right in the city of Detroit to protect ourselves, to, to gain access to a carry permit if we want to do it concealed or the open carry here in Michigan. 
and, and it's, it's very encouraging. You know, last year, the city of Detroit was the justified homicide capital of the year. Uh, if crime still uh, doesn't abate, you know, we might, you know, uh, reclaim that title this year, which is fine. You know, I would like to see the fact uh, reflected in the stats that citizens are defending themselves. Very encouraging. Absolutely. And, in fact, uh, you all are doing a benefit fundraiser legally armed in Detroit for a uh, another uh, right-to-carry holder who was uh, injured in a carjacking attempt, right? Exactly. And like I said, you know, the stories keep coming, and, and they're very encouraging because it shows that people here in this town are fighting back and that we can defend ourselves. And, and the story that we're talking about now, you know, a lady who chose to identify herself just as Elena, uh, she was involved in an incident with a couple of guys, uh, sprayed a car with uh, gunfire from a rifle, uh, she produced her lawfully carried concealed firearm in a car. She returned fire, and the bad guys left. And, you know, one of the unfortunate things sometimes with, with defending yourself and defending your life, she was injured. She took a couple of shots to her hand, and it's not known whether she's going to get full use of that hand again. And as a consequence of that, uh, she's no longer able to work where she was working as a waitress. You know, she has three small children. And, uh, man, I heard the story, and, you know, I got a few friends on Facebook, man, and uh, and I tend to lean towards gun owners and CPL holders and open carry guys, man, and everybody was saying, you know what, wouldn't it be nice if we could do something? You know, and I got to thinking about it and put on my brainstorming cap, and I was talking to a bunch of people, and uh, I found out that one of my favorite coffee shops, uh, Big B Coffee out in Southfield, Michigan here, a local uh, suburb, they have a, a fundraiser program, and I approached the manager with the idea. He ran with it. He got, you know, they ran it through corporate. They put together a, a project called, you know, it's called a help, a helping hand for Elena. And essentially, what they're doing is that they're offering individuals that come into the shop and order, you know, these specialty beverages. They're going to make a donation based on every, you know, drink that people buy. You know, to go towards, you know, putting something together for her monetarily to help her and her three kids out. Um, she's actually going to be uh, in the in the building on Wednesday, this upcoming Wednesday on the 12th, between 5.30 p.m. and 7 o'clock p.m., you know, for people who have expressed an interest in helping her and maybe want to do something beyond, you know, the proceeds from the, you know, the specialty beverages. And I'm truly encouraging people, you know, who are interested in helping out you know, to get the chatter going on Facebook. You know, I'm on Facebook, uh, Rick Ector. Uh, my blog, Legally Armed in Detroit, I put up a post there where individuals can definitely get more information. But this story really touched me personally because, you know, one, she's a lady and women are being targeted in this town. Yeah. And two, she actually took the step of getting a concealed pistol license and learning how to defend herself. And she did that. She did it admirably. And I call her a heroine. And uh, I'm really proud of how she, she fought for her life. And uh, what's not really uh, been publicized a lot is that there were two other adults in the car whose lives she's also saved. So I really want to reach out to folks and let them know we're doing a fundraiser for her. And if you uh, would like to assist and like to get more information, drop by my blog, Legally Armed in Detroit. All right. Listen, Rick, really appreciate all you do, sir. And uh I ask you this every time we have you on. Um, are you getting a lot of calls, folks uh, increasingly interested in getting the right to carry license? Yes, they are. And you know what? What's what's really driving it is when we get those those I call them positive defensive gun use stories. Man, you call them like the deal of the day. Yeah. You know where individuals where the story is actually making it out to the media that people have been targeted and they happen to be carrying legally, lawfully, and that they actually defend themselves and they actually shoot back and shoot to defend themselves and protect their lives and their families. And when people see that, it has a positive effect on people who are thinking to themselves, you know what, I believe I can do it and I need to give somebody a call and train me so that I can get my license and so that I can feel more secure in my person. Absolutely. Rick, thank you again for your time, sir. Great talking to you this evening and uh, look forward to doing this again very soon. Man, it's always a pleasure, and give my regards to the gentleman, Mr. Pop, Mr. Price, and uh, hopefully I'll be talking to you guys soon. Absolutely. Thanks, Rick. All right.